Hello, buddy. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm doing my research for on the stock market for next week. I'm going to be looking to see what stocks I want to sell options on and just make my shopping list for the week. You wouldn't want to go into the week without knowing what you want to trade because it's very easy to over trade and put yourself into a bad situation. So this is me going through basically my entire process for setting that up. And then hopefully by watching this, you might pick up a trick or two or maybe it'll give you some ideas. So first off, the first thing I would want to do, I always do, is try to look at my portfolio on a macro level, see what's going for me, what's going against me, how just how am I looking? Like maybe I'm tapped out of funds and I shouldn't be looking to put anything on, but we're going to go ahead and do that real quick. So when I'm doing this, I use a Google spreadsheet where I try to look at the notational value. I try to make sure that if I was to be completely wrong, the stock market went 100% against me that I would have enough cash that my account would be at least above zero. So I wouldn't owe the brokerage any money. So I look at notational value, the amount of money that is risked per every play, kind of add that up and make sure that that's near one-to-one -one with how much cash I have in the account where my net lick is. <clears throat> okay, so anyway, in order to do that, what I go through is I look at every option play and I put it into a Google spreadsheet. And I'm going to pull that up right now. So let me move this guy. Uh, well, I had this open. It's interesting with uh, portfolio margin, how much buying power you get. Like, I don't trust myself trading a million dollars. I don't know why they do. <laughs> it's crazy leverage. My account's only at 175, and they'll give me almost a million dollars to trade. And that's with stuff already on. That's pretty crazy to think about. Anyway, let me switch this to the spreadsheet. So the last time I did this video or showed you this kind of process, this is what everything looked like. I had a bunch of stuff that was in the money. Volatility increased, and I basically told you guys just wait for it to volatility to decrease and see what happens. Had a lot of stuff that was in the money, and now I went through and put in all the new positions. Uh, stuff that was in yellow was in the money before, and as you can see, now I only have four things up here that are in the money. And over here is what I put as my tentative plan of action. And then the green stuff are plays that I put on since I made that spreadsheet from the last time. So I sold a new egg put at $10. And then I also did the coin put at 200 which is 20000 risk. I also put on these two guys here. I should have color this green and these are those bear positions you saw me put in on my last weekly video I talked about those quite a bit so basically how this is set up is I put the ticker I I have the position on I put the strike price and that's just so I can calculate how much money is being risked the amount of contracts that I have on and then this column is just the strike price times the amount of contracts times a hundred because as you know options are worth a hundred shares so you multiply it by a hundred uh, this column is just the current price, and since all these were puts, if this is less than that, then we know it's in the money. So that's just what that formula is looking for, is is the current price of this stock less than the strike price? If yes, I'm in the money. So these would be positions that I need to look at, because all of these guys are puts right now that are in this area here. And down here are just my combination plays, and these are like plays where you have a spread on and your max risk is defined by the difference between the, the spread and the prices. So then here we have Snow. Snow is a different position. I usually sell options. This one's actually me buying premium because I bought the 650 and sold the 350. So they just technically working against me. And in this guy, my max loss would be the debit I paid to enter the position. So that's the most I could lose on this position. If snow stays about 365, which actually shot up six dollars, so it's actually against me right now. But I've got like 40 days on that, so I'm just gonna let that one sit. So that's what I'm looking at. Uh, altogether, the amount risk is 127 for notational value. Subtract that from my cash, and I have room to play with. I got 28,000 that's basically just sitting there collecting dust, so I got room to find stuff to put on. Uh, the next thing I like to do is just kind of use this sheet to kind of think about plays I'm doing. And I go through my watch list and just look at tickers that I want to take a look at. <laughs> so 
I'm gonna do that next. Let's go ahead and bring up Ameritrade. And as you know, I like to do all my analysis on Ameritrade. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Let me pull up my watch list that I like to go off of. That's getting kind of annoying. Okay. Uh, so then I just like to look at the charts and see if there's something that I like. So let's look at American Airlines here. What's going on here? Oh, so I kind of trade in the middle. Let's switch this to one year. Looks like it's trending down here. It's below a lot of the EMAs. And I think this is mostly because of the <clears throat> Omnicon variant. Uh, wow, like, what is that, like 16 here? A lot of volume. Well, I think uh, we might be one for one here. Let's uh, take a look at the uh, option trades here. I'm liking the, where is that? If there's premium at like the 16 level, or like if I can get below this 1580 volume, then this is where I think I may want to be. I would like to see this be more oversold. It looks like they're kind of rebound to the middle here a little bit. But yeah, I think this might be one to sell a put on. So kind of crazy that we're one for one to start with. On Ameritrade, I like to use the Analyze tab when I'm just looking at stuff like this. And I like to go out to like a month out. Looking at, uh, you know, if I want to be under 1580. 1550 is right there. Uh, the Delta is 17. <clears throat> so that means that there's a 17% chance of this finishing in the money, which inversely means 83% chance of it finishing out of the money. And then I can quickly see that we're getting almost double the premium for what the strike price is. So this is about a 2% return for a month hold. And that fits like all my metrics right off the get-go. So that was actually pretty awesome. Uh, let's go ahead and add that one in to my spreadsheet here. So we're looking at AAL uh, January 14th. Seems to be a popular date for me. 1550 put. Premium, we can expect to get filled about 32 cents. Uh, what I said that was 17 delta. And we'll look at the margin requirement later. I know it's not going to be that much. And this might be one that I, <clears throat> I might sell two contracts on. So. We'll put that on there. A strike is 1550, coincidentally. And this is actually just a month hold, so we'll put that in there. And as you can see, this changed to a 2% return based off those numbers that we just found. And then at the end of the video, we'll put in the margin maintenance to see what the plays would be as I set up my watch list that I'll put the orders in. So there you go, one for one. Uh, Apple. I actually already have a play on Apple, so normally I would skip this, but we'll take a look at what's going on. Just to check on my play. Obviously, I sold at 175, and I'm looking for the movement to go down because RSI is oversold here. If I didn't already have that play on, I would be putting it on right now at the 180 strikes. So I'll be doing a bear zebra at this point. Uh, another option for this might be to do a call spread. And let's take a look at what that would look like. So I would probably jump out to around 30 delta minimum, which would put you at 192, maybe a little higher than that. And this would be what... Well, these spreads are kind of huge here. So we'll look at the 195. Oh, is it not? Oh, it might help if I actually went to the right tab here. <laughs> Sorry about that. So 195, we saw that. We buy the 200. Let's get all this other junk out of here. Oops. Sell the 195. And we'll look at what the risk profile of this would look like. So if Apple stays below 195, you get $37, but you're risking 500. Uh, actually, I don't like that. So maybe don't stick to the cost for us, especially since Apple does seem to be 
a bit bullish and we're in uncharted territory. But that's kind of some stuff that I'd be looking at would be if it's RSI is oversold uh, by or overbought by a lot. I'd be looking to sell like a covered call or something like a bear zebra. Uh, BA, how's BA looking? BA is trading in the middle. We had that low showing 188 may have been support. I'm not sure that I like this. I think this is more likely to go up than down, but not enough to put my money on it. Next, uh, Clorox. Do I already have a Clorox play on? See, this is why you review your portfolio so that you know you're not going crazy putting too much of the same stuff on. Uh, don't. Okay. I like playing Clorox, so let's take a look. What do we got going on here? We just had earnings, no earnings until February. Trading at volume, like a lot of volume in this little area here. Uh, if the COVID variant continues to make the news, I would expect Clorox to go up. Kind of trade in the middle here, so it's not the ideal setup, but it does have room to gap up. We have this giant drop here. Let's go to the Analyze tab, Clorox, you can see I played this before. <laughs> what would I want to get to, I guess would be the question. Switch this back and forth real quick. I mean, 156 is 52-week lows. And that'd be pretty safe, probably, to be told, but going back, 150. 48 is like the low for the two weeks. All right. So we're looking at like the 150 level would be where I want to be at. 150. Ooh, the premium there is not quite good enough for me. So I, I try to aim for 1% a month. So you want to see a quick way to see that would be look at the bid and ask, see if that equals the strike price here. So if this was an expected fill of like 150, that'd be a 1% return. So this would be like a half percent return for a month hold. Which, but it might be a pretty safe play at 13 Delta, but it's just, the premium is just not there for me, especially for the fact that this would take on $15,500 of risk for 80 bucks. Like the return needs to be higher for me. The only spot where the return seems to be high enough would be 160. And that's kind of pushing it because when we looked at this 160, I feel like can get breached pretty easily because we're trading pretty close at this point. Once if Clorox gets, goes down a bit more, then maybe the 150 would get enough premium. So that'd be something to keep an eye on. But for now, that's just not going to be there. Uh, Ford, <clears throat> like I don't want to sell some puts on Ford. It seems to be just taking off. But based on how I normally enter positions, RSI is high. We're at all-time highs. Uh, I'm just curious about what the uh, Leafs would look like for this guy. Because it seems like Ford is making a big push in the EV company. It might actually take off quite a bit as they take away some of the market share from Tesla and stuff. And there's a lot of Ford fans that would jump on that train pretty hard. Alright, so... I like to go in the money at about eight delta. <clears throat> so then, if you're looking at like twelve dollar calls or ten dollar call range, the extrinsic value for the ten dollar would be forty one cents. That's how much you'd be learning or losing to theta over that time, which that's not bad. So if you want to go long on Ford, like buying some in the money calls at the ten for like a couple of years out, could be beneficial. Could pay off. But remember, Ford was trading at four bucks when uh, all this COVID stuff started. So you have to be prepared to lose the premium that you would pay to get into that position, which would be about twelve hundred dollars if you get a fill at that range. So for twelve hundred dollars, you can control a hundred shares of Ford. You could try selling cover calls on it. I don't think there'd be a lot of premium here. So that was. Sorry, let me go back here and see what that cost basis would be. 
So $10, 12 So you might be selling it above 22 if you're doing like a poor man's covered call. And I guess, the, well, the premium is 100 bucks, 80 bucks if you get above here. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to just kind of put that as a word PMCC. I may have to revisit that one. <laughs> I kind of kind of like that idea, even though like the trade chart says like that might be, you know, pretty high. Like we're at all time highs here, but I kind of like the idea of doing a PMCC on Ford, despite what I'm seeing here. And going down the list, let's see what else we got here. J and J. Again, like right here would have been probably a good time to sell some puts. Looks like we kind of recovered back into like this trading range here. I wouldn't go short because I doubt there's much premium. That would probably be above probably 190 even because there's not much volume to slow it down above this range here. And at the same time, I don't want to go sh sell some puts on it. I'm just kind of neutral on this. This might be something that more advanced traders would do like a strangle, but I'm just gonna sit J and J out. It just doesn't just sit right with me. Coca Cola got a little double bounce here. Showing that 52 might be a decent support. Going back 50 seems to be where a lot of volume would be if the 52 support broke. So let's take a quick look and see what the 50 put would be. 50 put, oh, it only pays 15 cents. No. Mm -hmm. I would have to be at 55. And what delta would that be? 32. I mean, it's doable if you really like Coke and you don't mind owning 100 shares. But for now, I'm going to pass on this one. Kroger. I used to love playing Kroger. But right now, they're in the news and because of all the strikes that they're doing. Like they're replacing a bunch of employees, so a lot of people are saying ban or don't buy Kellogg products. I'm not sure I like that, but so far, it doesn't look like the stock cares about that too much. I guess right here is probably where they announced that they could be replacing workers and people bought the dip. <laughs> uh, I guess there's also earnings, so that probably caused the quick dip down. Kroger, I would want to be like in this range. I can already tell you that the premium for being down here is going to be nothing. But let's take a look. 37 a month out, 17 cents. Actually, that's probably higher than I thought it would be. But still, I don't. It's not enough that I want to put that position on. Especially in this choppy market. I want to be a little bit more selective on my plays. You know, Microsoft just seems to keep going up. <laughs> uh, so I guess if you're going to play Microsoft it'll come down to like where do you want to buy the stock at <laughs> this seems to be like a stock where people are moving their money to kind of like a savings account like instead of putting in a savings account put in Microsoft or Apple because you know you're going to make money in the long term from those companies so I feel like it's like a savings account for the rich uh, so I wouldn't bet against Microsoft even though it's at all time highs and it looks like it might be overextended a little bit. But it's Microsoft. It just keeps going up. I'm just curious what the premium would look like on both sides. So if I was selling a put for the premium to make sense, I'd have to be at 325. Delta 23, that's not terrible. But that's only 300 and we'll, we'll call that $340 gained for $32,000 risk. Like that's a lot to put on for my portfolio. And 325, where'd that look like on the chart here? That that puts us way up here. Like, no thank you. Like, I don't want to be, like, at least down here in, like, the 285 range, which is just too far away from the money to be worth anything. Or, you know, selling an option on Microsoft. Let's look at the call side. How high can you get and still make a decent premium? 
$355, you'd have to be like $10 away. And then if you make that a spread, because I wouldn't do a naked call, you give half that back. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to pass on that one too. Okay. Uh, Netflix. Please let me see something on Netflix that I like. If you've been following my trading channel, you know I've made a lot of money off Netflix, but I have not touched it in like the last two months. The chart is just not made sense to me recently. Like, I don't get why it went from this range here all the way up here to $700 and just seemingly kept going up and then seemingly for no reason it <laughs> just shot back down. Like, would have been a great time to continue shorting. In fact, I was uh, selling call spreads against it up here, but when I was doing that, like, Netflix would still go back up and like test my strikes up there, which was kind of crazy. So this one, I'm still waiting for Netflix to go back down. Uh, we have earnings and in January 18th. And what's crazy is like it says it's oversold at this point, but like I feel like the fair range is right here in like 500 to 550. So again, the stock just kind of deviates for where I expect it to be. So I just can't touch it, despite the fact that I really want to, because Netflix has been a money maker for me. NIO, this is one of those stocks that <laughs> has meme status, but it seems to just be trading here. It's just like a lot of those meme stocks, they went up a lot, and they've been trading flat since then. Like, how long is that going to continue? I don't know. I do have a 35 put I sold, because I thought this would be a decent support level. It looks like we just dipped below that on that Omicron news. And it's recovering a little bit. And I, if I was going to trade an IO today, if I didn't have already have a position, I'd probably be looking to get as safe as I can while getting like a 2% return. And that's actually pretty nice that you can get down here. Like this 27 strike, 14 delta for 2% return. That's actually pretty good. I might put that on my uh, shopping list video, my top three video. So I'm just going to make a note on that one. 14. That's the 27. And how much premium did we get? 65. And the delta was 14. Strike price twenty seven. Again, that's a one month thing, so two point four percent on that. I, that's actually pretty nice. If I didn't already have some NIO on, or if I was really bullish on it and like the company, I might put more on. But I don't particularly like NIO as like a stockholder view, so I'm not going to put that on. But I think it's a pretty decent play. Let's look at Realty Income. This again, this is a stock that I don't mind owning. In fact, I sell a lot of puts on it in my Roth IRA and it's done really well for me. Uh, looks like it's gone down a little bit recently. Let's see what the uh, premium looks like. Going out a Oh, what happened here? 70, 100, what? Interesting. So there must have been something crazy going on with, oh, seeing all these different strikes going on. Anyway, we'll just look at the normal strikes. So uh, one week away, there's probably not going to be much premium here. If you're really fine with owning shares at 65, you could sell this for a quick 20 bucks in a one week hold. But let's go ahead and look a month out. And the 62.50, this would be about a 1% hold for five weeks. And it's 18 Delta. If you're fine with getting assigned on O, this could be a decent play. Uh, do I have O on right now? Let's take a look. I don't think I do. Oh, so then so that would actually be one that I'll probably end up putting on, actually. 
So 6250, 18 delta. Sixty-two fifty, and this is the January twenty-first. How much premium was it? Probably aim for a fill about fifty cents. Sixty-two fifty. It's five weeks. I'm gonna put one point two five about a one percent return. For a month. Uh, all right. Next up. So this is really what I do. I just go through and I do all this on the weekend so I can recalibrate myself and see exactly what I'll be looking at. If you don't go on with the plan, then it's very easy to overtrade and stuff that you weren't really planning on. Pfizer. Uh, because of like the news and stuff. Gonna be bullish on Pfizer, despite the fact that it looks like it might be overextended. Not sure I want to sell a put unless I was down near the forty range, which is pretty far away. So I can already tell you that there's not gonna be much premium there. So let's just go ahead and move to the next ticker. Uh, ooh, Planeteer, Palantir. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, this is a company I'm really bullish on. I already have a put play on it but uh at these holes i'll be fine picking up more shares so let's just look what the premium looks like and you get some nice uh nice premium wow you can sell the 16 put for 30 dollars and a delta of 50 16 50 at 20 delta like i i really like that so in my portfolio, I have three puts at the 22 strike, and that's obviously in the money. And what I'm probably going to end up doing is take a assignment of those shares, and then I'll sell a put at 30 delta, which would be right now the 1750. We'll see if that changes over the week. To collect more premium to attack that position, if that gets assigned, then I lower my cost basis because I'm doubling my position in that spot. And that's basically where I'm going to be looking at for me, is the 1750 Palatier, but I'll put on my watch list just so I can remember that. 1750, I think that was 0.6, wasn't it? Yeah, 0.6, and then the Delta is 28. And for me, I'm going to be doing three because that's what I'm doing when I get assigned the shares. You can see that's a 3% return for a month hold. And if Palantir goes down, then you own a great company at that price. <laughs> uh, Roblox. This is a stock I really want to like sell a bear call spread against. And shot up to 140. I was trying to get it filled at like a 180 bear spread before, and it couldn't get it filled. Now it's kind of went back down. I think it's more likely to go down than up from here. The trades for about a month out. I want to get super far away. Looks like you can still make some decent premium here. Oh, it's here. So you can see I was trying to get filled on a 140, 150 call spread. I still think that'd be a decent call spread on Roblox. And then. Would that be 32 bucks on a thousand wrist? Okay, that's not that great. So the premium is just not quite there. And to show you how I got to that, the difference between these is 34 cents. So that's $34 for putting on this trade. But the difference between my strike prices here is $10. So that's a thousand dollars. So 34 divided by a thousand. I mean, you just move the decimal over, but we'll show you the calculation. And then multiply that out. What was that? 3.4% return. Actually, that's not terrible. Just B 
feels wrong. Uh, again, that's something I'm going to keep an eye on moving forward is the Roblox. See if the premium goes up. If the VIX spikes and these premiums become worth more, then you might see me put on a bear spread on Roblox. But right now, I'm just going to keep that one in the in the back seat, back of my mind. Tesla. <laughs> uh, how can you trade Tesla safely? Let's take a look at V. This was one that I was bullish on. Still bullish on. Remember, I sold that zebra on it. That Had I held it, it would be looking decent again. But back here, I decided to close all my positions so that I can just enjoy Thanksgiving break and not worry about the stock market. And if you would have gone bullish on V any time during this point, you would have been doing fine. Again, I think it's long-term trending up. It's not a bad stock. Let's see what the uh, premium looks like for selling a put. Actually, first, let's see where we'd want to sell a put at before we even look at this train. Uh, we dipped to 189. Looks like a lot of volume for it to get back through, like a lot of price action in this area here. So really, that dip here, maybe a little lower going back. It's like 185. I wonder what that's worth. 185. It's only worth 90 bucks or 80 bucks, probably, is what you get filled at. That's not terrific. That's, but I think it's a relatively safer play. You can see that this is 8 delta. Most of the other plays we've been looking at have been 15 delta or higher. If V has like a small dip, these premiums could get injected. So that's something I that might be actually worth looking at. But I like to also spread out my strike my expirations a little bit a lot of the stuff we've been doing is january 14 so let's go ahead and see what going out a month or a week would be and that makes it a little belt better the delta's at nine a little bit more premium i'll put this on the watch list i kind of like this one even though it doesn't get me that one percent return a month it doesn't seem terrible what is that 23 i think it was 0.2 Premium about a dollar, nine percent. I would only sell one because this is gonna take up eighteen thousand five hundred dollars of risk. You could turn it into a spread if you want to, and you make a little bit more return on the cash risk. So if you're gonna do that, it would be kind of neat. In this situation, I think the 185 would actually be pretty safe. So instead of just making the spread one strike above, I'd probably go further out even. And so this changes this. Instead of having $18,000 risk, I now have $2,500 risk. And this 185 strike would lose value a lot quicker than the 160. So it's almost like doing a naked put but not quite if you want to like simulate a naked put you can go further out in time or further up in the strike price for your your long put and then you're only losing twenty dollars for making it a spread and lowering the amount of risk on this position but i think it's very unlikely for v to just shoot down right like going back the lowest i got to was 133 in the last year or two years about three years. Let's let's go back even further. 121. So it would seem kind of silly to be buying a call here to make it a spread because it's very unlikely to go down that far. So basically, if you need to reduce the amount of capital to make this trade, this might be the spread that I'd be looking at. But if it does get down to 180, I think we could just roll and chase it down. If it dips below 180, because it's not going to go much further than that, I don't think, anytime soon. Oh, zoom. How's zoom looking? Zoom, just on a downtrend. I mean, that's pretty obvious. Our size says it's oversold. Let's change this back to like the two year. 
I mean, it has room to go down as well, but I have a put sold at 185. I'm still going to let that run its course. I think that expires this week, actually. So at the end of this week, you'll see if I put on a new Zoom trade. Just looking ahead, though, 41 days out. Where's, what's 30 Delta look like? 170. I'll probably go a little safer. Oh, wow. Yeah, the premium is pretty good. Is there earnings coming up? Earnings is not till February. Well, if you like Zoom, and you're not already in it, like, I think any of these are pretty darn good. <laughs> 150. How low can you get and get 1%? 140, you can still get 1%. I like that. I may not put this on this week, but this might be a play for the following week. 140 premium was how much? You could probably get fill it 315. Three fifteen. Said so that was actually it might help. I was looking at the right strike here. I'm sorry about that. Okay, so one fifty eight delta. One fifty eight delta. So the return be one point three four percent for putting on that trade. And if you don't have. $14,000 laying around. You could turn this into a spread. Maybe go as far as buying the 100 It only costs 20 bucks to make it a spread. And that'll reduce the cash you need to secure it. In worst case scenario, if it drops down to 60 you save some money there. So 40 to $100, that would be a $4,000 risk. And you'd make about $120 off of that if you turn that into a spread. And to do that, you'd sell the 140 Maybe buy the 100. If we go to the risk profile. You can see our max loss is less than 4,000 because we're receiving a nice little credit here. Our max gain is limited to that credit. So that would be a decent play on Zoom. I would just go naked if you have the cash. If you need to do a spread, I would go pretty far out of the money to simulate going naked, even though it's not really naked. And some people don't like buying, like, the other side. You're just giving premium back. I just view it as insurance. I mean, you're making a lot of money spending 20 bucks on insurance to make sure that it doesn't go superly wrong. Doesn't seem like a terrible idea. Just assume that that's a lost. Is the, uh, the, the long call. Just assume that's lost. And, or the long put, sorry. It's just there to reduce your risk for your portfolio. Chewy. Chewy's going down, and I think this has uh, to do with like production issues. And I'll go into the stores recently around here, not finding the same foods that I've been giving my animals. So there's some production issues going on. Earnings just came up, and looks like there's a lot of volume to push it down to 49. Looks like it's in a pretty strong downtrend, actually. But, again, I hate going uh, bearish on stocks. If I was to sell a put, I'd probably be fine sitting at, like, the 47 range, 45 range. Actually, I think I already have a play on for that. Let me uh, take a look. I do. I have the January 7th 45 put already in action. So I guess before I was looking at this and said 45 might be a nice little support. Well, here's 50 bouncing off, so I'm still not being tested. If you're not already in it, which I am, so I would not be looking at this. Uh, the 45 put pays you a pretty nice premium at 20 Delta. $140 for 4,500 risk. You can even get safer and still get that 2%, which is probably what I would do if I wasn't already in it. So like you could sell the 37 put 7 delta, so there's a 93% chance that you collect this 40 bucks and do nothing the entire time. Uh, wow, that's a pretty nice play, actually. <laughs> so Chewy, 122, 37, 37. 
seven. This might be one that I might actually sell one, even though I have a put already in play. And if I wasn't already in it, I might sell two, but since I'm already in it, I'll sell one more of these. And it's on a different strike or a different expiration date. So I think this might be one that you actually see me put on because that's pretty nice. I like it. What did I just do there? That was weird. Oh, <laughs> yeah, if only we got 3,700 for uh, putting on this play, then I'd really like it. <laughs> All right. Let's look at some more Airbnb. I'm not sure if I ever actually traded Airbnb, but it's been on my watch list forever, it feels like. What crazy stuff is going on here? Double bounce right here at the 130 level. So that's obviously some strong support. A lot of price action at 150. It shot up to 219 before. So if I was going bearish, I'd want to be above that price, which is too far away from the money to even be worth it. If I was going to go bullish, I'd want to be at least at 148. I highly doubt that there's enough premium in there for me to really consider this guy, but let's take a look. Oh, I guess there is. 1% return there. Uh, Airbnb. I don't usually look at the news, but let's see if there's anything in here that's going on. Uh, <laughs> what? Two months into a top job, she was thinking, how do I still have a job? <laughs> I don't know. That just seems funny. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. Why do I have a job? Why haven't they fired me yet? Okay. That's an interesting uh, thing. Airbnbs. Trade lower as reopening names dip following the recent strength. Minha. Kind of reading these. Seems like there's anything that really stands out. Okay. Let's go back here. Turn off the light. And dip to 150 before it came back up. This would be one that I'll be keeping an eye on. The market's a little choppy recently. So I'm not going to venture into Airbnb right now. But if Airbnb, for some reason, dips back down here and I have room in my portfolio, I may look to put on like a put like in this range here, like 137 to 140 range. So this is just something that I'll keep an eye on. And I'm just going to hold off for now. I'm not against the 145 put too much now. But I'm going to be a little bit more selective in my what I put on. So we'll wait on that one still. <laughs> if you trade Airbnb, then go ahead and uh, do what you feel is right. CCL. A look, make sure I don't have one on. Oh, okay. I like trading CCL. It just seems to be a stock that I would not mind owning and just holding on to it because I think the potential for it to go up long term, it'll it'll come back. People want to go on their cruises. So charts, where do I be in the short term? A lot of trading level here, and like. 14, so if I'm near here, I'd be fine. A lot of volume to get down below 15.30, so let's see what the 15 puts trades were. 41 days out, 15 put, 30 cents. It's about a 2% return, 12 delta. Okay, I'll probably slap one of those guys on. Hmm. 
Did I get that all right? 15, 23, yeah. Okay. So there you go, there's another trade. That's a lot of trades uh, on that shopping list. So when it comes down to it, you just pick whatever you feel is best. Costco, Campbell Soup, I already have some puts on. Expired next week. Dallas, Disney. Let's look at Disney. Disney had a nice little dip to 140. It's going back up. The volume here, I think, is mostly from this area here. Now, the thing that concerns me about Disney right now, let me remove this to so actually see what's going on. Remove drawing. Like, it's gapped up to get to this 145 level. So, like, if this gets breached, it's gapping back down to the 120 level. So, that's just something to be concerned about if you're. Trading Disney and it retests that, you know, 140 level again. Like there's a there's room to gap down pretty quickly. Although, you never want to bet against the mouse, right? <laughs> uh, if it's a sell a put, I'm just curious what like the 130 range would be at. It's 130, not really too much there. You'd have to be sitting at 140 to get that one percent return. Uh, since I have a lot of plays for that, I might even go out another week. Let's see what this looks like. 18 Delta. I don't know. 140. If I was going to sell a put on Disney, I think 140 on January 28th would be what I would really be eyeing here. 18 delta is a little high because what concerns me is like if this gets breached, like it is shooting back down to 124. Like there's room to move down if you're wrong on this play and it can move pretty quickly. I mean, you've seen Disney's been a little gappy going backwards, even. I think it's more likely to go up than down, but not enough for me to put my hard earned money into. So I'm going to pass on that for now. I want a spread look actually. We got. Eh, that's. It, depending on your fills here, this could be a decent spread or a terrible spread. Like the fills here, $11 to risk $500. No, thank you. Facebook. I'm not sure if I've actually ever put a trade on Facebook. Chart. So how are we looking on the chart? The whole new meta? Is it meta yet? When does this switch to meta? <laughs> uh, 265 is where I want to play at. That's pretty far away from the money. I wouldn't want to go bearish on Tesla. Or sorry, on Facebook. When I say 245, the spread there is just too much. Like You're not going to get a decent fill. You might get like 100... 40 if you're lucky. That's precious too huge. Interesting that the bid here is lower than the bid there, but okay. <laughs> GameStop. Thank you, IBM. Intel. All right, let's take a look at Intel here. This is one gappy guy. Like, look at that chart. <laughs> uh, is there something in the news that's making it go crazy right now? Put this news feed up over here. Talk about ship shortages and trying to fix the supply, I guess. Uh, your assignment. You think it might take five years to get well? That's not great. <laughs> 
again, I think Intel is always going to be a decent company to be bullish on. Even like the last, is this the two year chart still? Yeah. Even the lowest is 43. I think there might be some decent premium in here for us. So we'll look at the guy here 45. 47. Would you mind owning Tesla at 47? Delta 24 here. Ooh. 45. When was the last time it was at 45? Hmm. Oh, it's also below that volume there, so. Yeah, let's sell a put on uh, Intel for 45, huh? Uh, 35 cents, 13 delta. I'd only sell one because that's $4,500 risk. Yeah. Strike price was 45. And just under a 1% return for a monthly hold, basically. It's not terrible. KMB, how's KMB doing? How long is this video going to be? <laughs> it's me a little longer because I'm working on one screen instead of like five or two, actually. Let's not over exaggerate. Uh, KMB, I love this 130 level. We're trading at 136. RSI's at 55. This just trades in a range, like... Honestly, KMB seems like a stock you might be able to do strangles on. Or iron condors, I mean. So let's take a look at that. I like the 130 range. 130 plays pretty well. But that's just high. So why is that delta elevated? Uh, well, we got earnings on 125. So that's where that increased premium is coming in from. What if we go shorter? 20 delta. What if we sell that? What if we make a spread? Nah. We sold the 130. We could probably get the 130 filled at 80. So forty five dollars for five hundred risks. Uh, not sure if I like that. Like KMB is a stock I wouldn't mind owning at one thirty. So I'll put that on the list here. We'll see what the margin carbon stuff is, but KMB one seventy. 30. What do we say? Like 0.8 for the premium. Delta is 20. Kind of looks like one of the more riskier plays that we've put in here so far. Uh, you know what? Actually, like looking at these here, like the return. Versus the probability. Uh, you know what? I've been doing in the money. So percent in the money has probably changed that column header there. Like compared to like everything else that we've been looking at, that seems like a lot more riskier to put on for a smaller return. So we'll scratch that for now. Sorry, KMB. You, you don't make the cut. Rocket. Oh, Spice. We haven't... So Verge Galactic, I already have some put plays on that I think is in the money. So I'm not going to be looking to put anything else on right now for it. But going back two years, it's at like 
the uh, pretty much like the low that gets tested often, I guess. Like there's a lot of support at this level to buy in. And Virgin Galactic is just one of those like you just see spike constantly. Like this feels like a day trader's wet dream or something. So you can uh, load up on shares here. Even you don't have to even go through options to make money on this. Analyze in the premium is pretty good too. This is only 27 days. You could sell the 13 put, make what is that 2% return on your money, even more than that. Is there like earnings coming up? Not until February 18th. Oh, there you go. That's a pretty nice looking uh, spot right there, I think. Just curious. What if we go a little closer here? 14 would be 30 delta. There's no strikes higher or lower than that. Interesting. 12 days. This will burn very quickly if you want to go in here and do a 24 delta. What if we go further out in time? 12.50 for 18. I kind of like this one. Now, oh, again, Virgin Galactic has won that. I actually already have some plays on. Oh my god, I just realized I've been putting 22, even though it's like January 14. Whoopsie. All right, January 14th there. Uh, premium. Well, say we probably get filled at like 53, and the delta is 22. Because I like Virgin Galactic, that's probably what I would end up doing if I didn't already have it. If I get assigned the shares, again, I'm going to be running the uh, flat wheel strategy, I guess you would call it, and try to repair the, the stock. By doing that, 13, this is actually just a three week old, wasn't it? Oh my God, it's, it's, it's a one month old. So that's a pretty nice, uh, I think that's pretty good. Thirteen. All right, I think this is a pretty big list here of uh, stuff that we, uh, be looking to put on actually instead of margin requirement let's look at the notation notational value here notational so that's something that i want to be looking at more often now so 1550 times two if you're lazy 15.5 times two times 100 and i guess actually i could just do a formula here equals spray price times contract times 100. Put these in, paste this down. And then, although I would not be putting all these on, cause like some of these, like, and I, well, I would not put all these on because, well, notational value here would be 62,000. And if you look over here, I have about 28,000 in terms of room. So then that's how much I have available to me if I was to tap out, which I probably wouldn't go that much. So looking at this, how can I get this number down to here? Well, I'll look at positions that maybe I put too many contracts on that I might not actually put on. They're just on my shopping list for you guys. So Zoom, I would not be putting this guy on because I already have a Zoom play on. So if I change that to zero, that lowers us significantly. And then looking at the rest of the stuff here, I can see... Verizon here, or sorry, Visa, takes a lot of uh, notational value for a very small return compared to everything else that's in here. So if I take that one out, then this looks more one-to-one -one here, which means I could theoretically put all these plays on and be fine with not over-leveraging. So there you go. That's how I will go through and make my shopping list. You saw me review my portfolio to make sure I have room to put new stuff on because I don't want to be 
overexposed. Uh, you saw me go through a bunch of stickers, try to pick out ones that I want to sell puts on or maybe sell calls on. Well, I think I came up with only <laughs> bullish plays again. I'm a pretty bullish guy on most of my trades. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this content. If you liked it, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, if you're making some plays of your own, let me know what you guys are doing. I'd love to check that out. And hope you guys have a good week next week. See